Now it's my pleasure to introduce Jane Tobler, uh, who uh, is going to talk about TTI. And Jane, you'll introduce your team? OK. We'll just go over here till it works. So I'm going to ask our TTI, the panelists, to come up here. And in the meantime, um, so perfectly set up about using your phones, if everyone could get out your phone at this point, because if you're not already like texting your family and friends, like, can't wait for a break, except we're so excited about TTI. Um, we are gonna, this is a fast paced speed dating TTI, and I know you're super excited for it, but the first thing you get to do is, um, oh, you get to scan this QR code. Now, um, the, I, I've got teammates around, stand up team people, come on now, circle around. So get your phone out, scan that. It's gonna go to Kahoot. It is not, you're not gonna get a virus, I promise, not from this anyway. Um, and we are going to play a very quick, whoo, okay. <laughs> you know, if I pick this up, will it work? What do you, what do you, do you think this, these are, oh yes, better. Okay, good. I don't like to be, I don't like to be pinned down anyway. All right, so, oh, oh, look, look at all the people. Becky, daytime, awesome. You guys are doing great. And it's Sunday morning. You are rocking this. Okay. So we're going to have questions that come up, and then you're going to answer them. Now, if you want to cheat and ask your table mates, you can. There may be prizes. OK, there's at least a few. All right, so ready? Are we ready? Oh, wait, we're still getting some people. Andy's on. All right, Oki, you can do this at home. David Miller, get that phone out. Rockstar Elephant, I don't know who that is, but I want to be on that person's team. All right, I think we're good. We're good. Ready? OK, scan, and let's start the first question. Do, 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 do. They're like, don't do this, Jane. Don't sing. Kahoot at work. TTI presentation. That's us. Three, two, one. Excitement is building. When was Nashbid founded? Does Brand Hepburn know that? Probably. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. If you can't see the, if you can't see the answers, my colleague is like kind of tiny. So. Red is 1909, gold is 1989, blue 1959, or green 2009. So take your guess, take your best guess. You get points for correct answers and speed, because it's speed TTI. Get your answers in. I know this is exciting, right? You didn't need to get coffee for this one before this one. You're good. OK, when was Nashville founded? We have 65 answers on the board. I would never be able to see this from back there. Let the record show. Can you guys see it? Are you able to see it? Everybody in? OK, when was Nashville founded? And the answer is blue. Oh, gold. A lot of people think it was gold, but they were wrong. 1959. How about that? So 27 right answers. Next question. Oh, so we're doing the answers, too. Candace, where's Candace? Candace, you are rocking it, my friend. You are winning so far. Woo! Next question. What year did the TTI start? Red, 2020. Blue, 2007. Gold, 2002. And green, 1998. What year did the TTI start? Yeah, do you guys know? Yeah. Are you giving hints? Oh. oh. <laughs> Do you guys need to phone a friend? Chris, what, what's your guess? What's your guess, Chris? I'm thinking 1998. Okay, 1998. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. That's his guess. Get him in. You get, you get credit for the correct question, answer, and the speed. My team is all like, why are you guys in the back? You're not, you think everyone has it? You think everyone has it. Okay. Get those answers in, people. Da, na, na. And some people are like, I don't know. 62 answers. I feel like you guys are giving up. Come on now. Just take a guess. Where is the elephant team? Take a guess. Two and one. 
What year did TTI start? Oh, it began in 2007. It was, uh, yep. Oh, Rockstar Elephant. Where is Ro Rockstar Elephant? Where are you? Whoever you are, you're doing great. Where? Oh, woo, okay. At the end of the TTI contract, you need to have expended all of your funds. True or false? Every single dollar, no matter what. True or false? That's not very flexible. <laughs> True or false? Get your answers in, speed and, and correct answers. You know, why is it I can only think of the um, do, do, do? Like, there's got to be other game show. Bum, ba, dum. Oh, because we're old. That's what my colleague Leah said. You can only think of that because you're old and that's all that's left in your brain. Thank you. Okay, true or false? All right, we're 14 seconds, 13 seconds. 20. You know, if you all just answered it, we would be done. But no, some of you won't. I see how this is. Here's a hint. You do not need to spend all of your funds at the end of the TTI contract. This is one of the, oh, and, and most of you got it correct. Yay. Rockstar Elephant is like rocking it. Yes. Very nice. That's one of the fabulous things is that um, you actually have a little extra time to finish it, which is pretty awesome. Um, what was the question? Oh, who, who funds the TTI? This is a very good one. One, SAMHSA. Red is SAMHSA. Gold is David Miller playing at home. Blue is the FBI. Not right. Green is Brian Hepburn. Perhaps you've met Brian Hepburn sitting over here. Um, so who funds the TTI? We are learning so much, and we have like barely even begun. Isn't this awesome, Laura? This is awesome. And you guys all knew these answers, right? You knew them, of course, some of them. Okay, I see. Okay, some of you are not answering, and I'm just wondering why. What happened? Come on now, guys. <laughs> yes. And we're all taking loans after this. Do, 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 do. Now, you, you sing. You should be singing, Buster. Okay. Who funds the TTI? The answer is, let's hear it. Three, two, one. Yes. Thank you, Samsa. You are the best. It is awesome. It's important. And everyone got it right. Lynn. Lynn is the highest climber. RR second. Robert third. Daytime fourth. JR fifth. And, of course, Rockstar Elephant winning still. When do you need to have your TTI application submitted? We are pretty sure that we will have them again, and we're so excited. Um, and the so when, when do you need to have it in? January 2024, November 2023, that's gold, blue, whenever I feel like it, or <laughs> <laughs> July 2023. In case you're wondering, we're not there, like we're barely there anymore, right? We're like at the end. So you have to do it right now if it's July. Just a little hint again to help you out. Fifty eight. See, people are giving up, and I don't know why. The questions are getting easier. The questions are getting easier, right? Jenna Maynard Baker from Pennsylvania, awesome TTI person, will be talking to us soon. Questions are getting easier. What's your answer on this one? I'm going with November. Good answer. I like that answer. And the answer is November. So, yeah, pretty awesome. So you're going to have a little bit of time to apply to the TTI. Candace, Candace is taking it back. Rin, Rin number two, winner number three. I love it. Just be, be who you are, winner. Be who you are. Say what you want. RR is fourth place. How long does your application need to be? This is a very good question. How long does it need to be? Four pages red, 20 pages gold or goldenrod, 10 pages blue, 100 pages green. Hmm, now it's very flexible. Rebecca, TTI, very flexible funding. What do you think? Do you have a guess for our, our audience? Four. Rebecca is, is guessing for Rebecca Roth, West Virginia TTI, and she is correct. Good answer. And, and how are we doing on the score? Candace. Whoa, whoa, Rockstar, come on now. 
uh, Candace Rin, RR, Andy, Robert, tough round, four players lost their answer streak. So there was four people with an answer streak. Okay, ready, 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 multi-select. Oh, this is multi, more than one. Which of the following topics has TTI funded? Click all that apply, hint. Red, workforce development. Goldenrod, 988 readiness. Blue, crisis service registry. And green, jail diversion. Workforce development, crisis service registries, 988 readiness, jail diversion. Buster Lackey from Arkansas, what is your, what's your answer? If you were going to phone a friend or not phone a friend, what would you say? Crisis service. Uh-huh. That's a good guess. And it does, in fact, do crisis services. What else does it do? Well, I phoned my friend Chris here, and he says it does all of them. Chris. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Chris Frazier, Delaware TTI. Awesome. I'm going to be talking to him about his TTI, too. Very exciting. And people are a little bit more nervous. Okay, 60 answers. We've got 60 answers. We're doing good. All right. Does anyone else want to hum a song of a thing? Anything? Nope. Okay. We're going to see how it's going. One second left. And the answer is... Oh, workforce development, got it. 988, got it. Crisis service registry and jail diversion. This is one of the awesome things about the TTI. Very flexible. Oh, yeah, Candace. Just, yeah. Candace is all over it. Here's another multi select. Where can I, or you, learn more about the TTI? Click all that, all that apply. Read this workshop. Goldenrod, the TTI staff, woohoo! Thank you. The Nashville Conversation Corner in the Expo Hall, or Green, the TTI website. Hmm, where can I learn more? Chris, do you want to just answer this one? All of the above. All of the above. But there's not an all of the above, so you have to click them all. <laughs> Candace and the Rockstar Elephant already know this. They're already on it, right? They're good. This is, we're practically done with this. We don't even need to have, no, we're having the presentations. <laughs> We're going to hear from states specifically about what they're doing. But um, that is what's so awesome. The little hint, the TTI staff who I'll ask to, to stand and wave your hand. Oh, yeah, one of you will. This is the awesome TTI team. You can talk to them. And even though um, Brian Hepburn doesn't actually fund it on his own, probably he might know a thing or two. That's what, just what I'm thinking, too. Yeah, a lot of us do. So it's good. Where can I learn more? Click all that apply. All, all, very well. And let's see how we're doing. Three, oh, presentation, T, wait, TC. Oh, third place is TC, second place is RR. First place, wait, is, hold on, Candace. <laughs> okay, RR, Candace, and TC. If you guys, you can be, you can, um, if you want to either see us afterwards, we have prizes for you, unless the team wants to bring them prizes now. No, yes, yes, okay. If you guys stand, but I feel like the uh, Rockstar Elephant gets some too, right? Because honestly, yeah, no, really. I mean, great name, very involved. I feel like you, you went too, okay. So um, thank you everyone for playing, that was awesome. And you've already learned so much about the TTI. And I've also, I think I introduced everyone. Oh, Rebecca Roth, West Virginia. I don't know if I said that. So these are um, some of the wonderful people who have helped lead TTIs in various states. And um, like I said, it's, it's speed dating TTI this morning. So I've asked them all to say a few words about what was their impetus? What, what, what made them want to apply? Was, you know, what were they trying to fix? Obviously, it's not going to be a 22-page answer. It's just going to be a few minutes. And you know, kind of tell us like where they are now. As you learned from the game, you know, we don't expect it to all be finished. We don't expect you know, everything like, oh, gosh, here it is. Did you fix it? Did you fix everything yet? Um, which is why we're all here. So um, I've asked them to do that. And then I'm just going to stand it down to Laura Brake from Kansas. Good morning. Um, so I'm Laura Brake. I'm the director of crisis for Kansas. Um, and I started in this position just uh, almost two years ago. Um, and um, Commissioner Brown said to me, hey, there's this great opportunity that you should go to try to get. And I had no clue what that meant or what I was supposed to be doing. Um, so I went home and I plastered my office with sticky notes and papers and 
came up with some thoughts about some things, um, and it turned into um, uh, two awards. Um, and the first one we focused on LGBTQ+, um, and ensuring that folks receive the care and support that they need um, to help save lives. Um, and the second one was focused on peer support um, and looking at how do we ensure that we are supporting our peer support. Um, because when they're out doing the work in that crisis continuum, we want to make sure that they get the support that they need so that we um, you know, have good, strong, stable workforce. Um, and so then we applied for another one for the next year, and we were awarded that one as well. And so then we've actually taken the peer support a step further um, to provide some additional training to make sure that the uh, peer support have the extra training that they need to also be successful. Um, so that's kind of where we are with ours. And I am just, I, I, I can't thank Nashpit enough for the support that you all have provided us. Um, the team is fantastic. Uh, when I came for this conference last year, I was so thrilled to be able to see everybody and meet everybody in person because it's just, we have had such amazing support from the team. So thank you all so much for having us. Yeah. Thank you, Laura and uh, Rebecca Roth from West Virginia. Good morning, I'm Rebecca Roth. I am the Director of the Office of Policy Planning and Research with the West Virginia Bureau for Behavioral Health. And um, how we got here is that in 2022, our West Virginia team headed up by Nikki Tennis over there, um, applied for TTI to support the children's crisis services in West Virginia and got so much out of it that we decided to apply in 2023 to um, do the same for our adult services and to really focus on those services being culturally responsive to every West Virginian. So um, because we also can't um, be one and done, we also applied for workforce development. Anything related to workforce, we uh, want to be involved with. Um, so we worked with that too and really focused on direct service provision because if those positions aren't filled, the rest of our workforce really suffers as well as the people we are trying to serve. So. Um, it's It's been a great experience. We had a wonderful lunch yesterday in which we got to talk in more detail about, you know, problem solving and the issues that we face. And so that was a great experience. So Jane and others at Nashbid, if you want to host a meeting um, somewhere fun, we are all in. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. And Buster Lackey, the NAMI Executive Director from Arkansas. So I'm probably one of the few non-state employees up here. But uh, so the first year we got the um, TTI grant. Uh, it's actually written for us by the state. And then they hand it to me and go, here, do this. So uh, I got to read it and put it together. But it was a great success. We ended the first year we did a, a mental health for all. And uh, this, this subtitle was um, Bridging the Gap Between LGBTQ and Mental Health Services. Um, we created several materials that we used to train uh, law enforcement, like in cultural diversity, um, mental health workers, and um, healthcare workers. Um, we did a, a really uh, large conference where we brought in people from all over the state uh, and had a really good day. Uh, the second grant this year, uh, I, I'm really excited because for, I don't know, about the last six, seven years, I wanted to do a project, but obviously without funding, how do you do projects, right? So we were, so this project uh, is a stigma-free workplace. So we are able to, to, to create trainings and create a model where we can go into companies, businesses, doesn't matter if you have four employees or 4,000 employees, work with the leaders, the, the floor supervisors, the HR, um, and teach them about mental health and provide, provide them with uh, resources and referrals and support groups, hopefully to keep people on the job so we can help them identify that, you know, that 18-year employee that's not coming to work or not per performing well at work anymore, cries at work, whatever, may be suffering from depression and not just that she doesn't care anymore about coming to work. So instead of them terminating her 
for him, keep them on the job uh, longer. So we're working with that. But that big piece I wanted to do was a documentary on, on the face of mental health. And um, I'm kind of sad because I wasn't in Arkansas yesterday, but they started filming yesterday. So I hope, um, who knows, maybe next year at the conference we can show the documentary, Jane. I don't know. So. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm interested in going to the Netherlands. Can we, do, can we make that work? <laughs> Ab absolutely. <laughs> we can make that work. Thanks, Buster. And, and as you can see from just even the three different state projects, you, the, state, the three different states with the multiple projects you've heard from, you know, it, it's, very, it's very flexible, it's, it's um, creative, it doesn't have to be, you know, it's not, we know it's not one size fits all. We know you have to do what's right for your community, what you need in your community, and, and how this can help bridge. So thank you. Jenna. Yeah, um, so in Pennsylvania, we're in the process of updating our crisis regs. They're from 1993, and as we were doing that, we decided to uh, establish some training requirements, four hours before crisis worker starts, eight hours in the first month. But then as a very large county-based system, we realized that would create a burden. And so what we did with our TTI grant was to partner with Temple University and create an online, uh, through a program called My Om Sasa, an online crisis intervention worker certification. So the idea is that the four hours you need to start will be there, the eight hours in the first month. You know, I always say I started at Friendly's at 15 and they plugged a VCR tape in and said, before you can go out on the floor, you gotta watch this. So thinking about crisis workers, if you're a small agency of one person starting, how are you going to get them trained? So nobody has to use this system, but if you, you can meet those basic requirements, print them off for your licensure inspection and you'll be good, or if someone wants to continue through that, we also have some advanced, I was very excited to get a professor from Yale who's doing our 50 minute segment on anti-racist practices, someone connected to the SOGI Center on gender affirming care, uh -huh. another section on uh, cultural humility and responding to new Pennsylvanians, our NAMI State ED is doing working collaboratively with families. So if someone does all of these segments and then does a six hour in-person de-escalation training, because that's what I hear from social work students all the time is why they're uncomfortable going out in the field. No one trains them on how to de-escalate. So we have a six-hour in-person de-escalation training, once again, through Temple, and a mental health first aid, because I think that's the best way to make sure someone's not walking out there with a lot of stigma. Um, they will be uh, certified by Temple and have three, uh, 30 free CEUs, which kind of connects to another challenge we have, which is we have a CMS planning grant which evaluated mobile crisis and determined we have really hardly anybody who's licensed, though you know, our crisis is funded under rehab, so it's important that we have more licensed folks. Mm -hmm. And we're not going, we recognize that clinicians are in such short supply, but we do a bachelor level licensure in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for LBS, for social workers. So the goal is to make it so someone would have all 30 CEUs and a certification with, this, um, with these modules and you know, you don't have to even be in crisis. A professor could use it to introduce someone to crisis. Law enforcement could choose to take any of these because they are, will be free and accessible to anybody and anybody, everybody and anybody who's interested. So we've really had a great partner in Temple in, in developing that. Thanks, Jenna. Chris Frazier, Delaware. Uh, so I'm Chris Fraser, a Chief of Research and Evaluation at the uh, Delaware Division of Substance Abuse and Mental Health. And Delaware has been a prolific uh, applier for TTI funding. And um, we have used that um, over the years uh, since 2019 to build on a number of, um, of identified issues within our uh, mobile crisis and uh, essentially our entire continuum of care. So uh, we have done um, this year and connected to the work that we've done in the past is looking at uh, under-resourced populations and seeing where we can uh, connect with them in where they are essentially. So the first uh, group that we looked at were justice involved and so that we, um, with TTI funding we were able to expand our mobile crisis to be outside of all the prisons uh, in the state of Delaware so that as they're being released or their family members are coming to, um, to visit them, they can connect the resources at the point that, that they are. Um, the year after that, this was last year, we uh, decided to uh, strengthen our um, child mobile crisis um, um, system by partnering with the kids department in Delaware to really um, think about what what uh, what the standards are and how we can collaborate more on that mobile mobile crisis piece. And this year uh, we 
applied for two uh, um, sources of funding. One was specifically to focus on uh, strengthening our peer workforce development. And um, that one is pretty exciting because it is, it is about standardizing how um, we, um, you know, remove any barriers for, for, for the peer workforce, all the barriers. So things like, you know, the course of certification that people don't really think about. We, you know, we've used some of the funds to remove that, as well as, um, you know, the, the implementation team has really focused on um, not just certification, but what, where do the peers go? So making connections with Department of Labor, um, the Mental Health Association of Delaware, so that there's, there's a clear pathway for peers uh, for employment. So it's not just about certification, but also, you know, after you're certified, after you've done all that work, where do you go and where, you, where do we plug you in? And um, really standardizing, even at the state level, having conversations with um, our Division of uh, Medicaid and Medical Assistance and DPH to have an actual career pathway within the state for, um, for peer support. So they, that implementation group is uh, developing job descriptions, KSAs, and um, an actual proposal for a career ladder within the state so that um, you know, the, the peer workforce knows that there's an actual step up as you, you move forward. And um, the last uh, one we apply for is, um, again, under resource communities, and this time looking at the uh, individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and, um, and dual diagnosis of so behavioral health and IDD, and um, essentially looking at uh, working with our partner agency, uh, again, uh, the, um, the Division of uh, Dis Disability Services in Delaware, and seeing where, how we can best train the workforce to deal with uh, individuals who have IDD and behavioral health. You know, how do we engage with them? What are the standards we need to develop when we engage with them in a mobile crisis setting? And um, one of the things about um, TTI that I like is that it, it oftentimes brings people to the table that we don't often think about. So mm -hmm. when we applied for the, for the TTI funding, we didn't know that uh, DDS uh, had already done some preliminary work. So we said we would have to do a needs assessment, we'd have to do this. And when we went in and brought them to the table, no, they, had, they were already looking at this problem. They'd already done a lot of groundwork, so now we can use the fund that we have to actually, you know, uh, develop the training materials in hand in hand and kind of pull a lot of different stakeholders together. And um, I'm generally a big advocate. I'm a TTI <laughs> evangelist, you know, um, <laughs> because of the flexibility of the, uh, of the funding that it has allowed Delaware to do some incredible things. And so I want to thank Nashbed and the TTI team and you know, Leah, Jane, everybody, you know, I love you guys. And you know, thank, thank you for the work that you all do. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, as you all know, working in the field, it's a lot of hard work. Um, and we, and I just want to say, you know, we thank you. We, th we thank the TTIs for all of their work. We thank all of you, each of you, for the work that you do every day. It's so hard. You rock. Actually, really? Everyone else in there. And, and like, like um, so one of the things you do is you will meet with, it is intensive TA, and we have monthly meetings, um, and we, you know, it's like, let your guard down, tell us what's going on, how can we fix it, how can we help, how can we get another state or territory that has done something like what you're trying to do, or if there's you know, um, issues that you're running into, let us still connect you with someone else that's had those same issues and see if we can't work it out. And it's the, you know, they're some of the best people that you ever get to work with, which I'm super excited about. So um, thank you all for sharing your experiences. And if you were going to use three words to talk, to, to describe, talk about, reflect, um, whether it's on your experience or on your TTI, what are those three words? Oh, and I'll give you a microphone because that'll be easier. Um, so I thought about this. We, after lunch yesterday, we talked, and um, I, I feel like one of the biggest things for me is inclusion because I feel like with the flexibility, it really focuses on how can you get the people to the table that need to be heard. Um, and I, I feel like that that's probably one of the big ones for me. Um, and then innovation. Um, I think that we're able to access, which access is actually my third word, but I think that with that, with the flexibility, that we're able to, um, you know, get creative and, like you said, figure out exactly what you need for your community, because it's so different. The needs are so different where you, you know, in the different areas in the different regions, um, and so I think that that um, innovation is just essential. Um, and then access, because I think that it, again, focuses on where is that need and how can we create access to the care that we want to make sure that people are getting. So I think those are my 
Those are my three words. Thank you, Laura. Rebecca? So my three words are listen, build on, I sort of cheated there, <laughs> build on and respond. Uh, because of the flexibility, we knew that there were certain partners we wanted to work with. We wanted to work with our 988. Um, in West Virginia, we have 1.8 million people, and so we have one call center. Um, so we knew we wanted to work with them. Um, we knew we wanted to work with our training center. We knew these various partners we wanted to work with, but having the time and space to talk with them in more detail, to learn about the different surveys that were already going out, meant we didn't need to spend our time doing a survey. We needed to look at the results of the surveys that had been happening and then build on them. So that was really part of the flexibility that um, was so important to be able to listen, build on, and then respond um, to the requests that we heard. Thank you. Buster? Well, being a Southerner, I don't know if I can say it in three words, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every month we have our calls, you know, it's kind of like you, you see it on the, on the calendar and you go, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to talk about this time? What, what, are we, what, what questions are they going to ask? But when we get on those calls and we're, you know, we're laughing and we're having a good time and we're developing and I'm learning, I'll say something and I go, oh, well, you, you know over in Delaware, or hey, did you know? And Robert with, in, with over at uh, NRI, you know, you can't ask that man a question he doesn't know the answer to. <laughs> so, you know, he's great. Um, but it's about collaboration. It's about advancement. And, and then really, the way I look at it, because I get to work with a lot of people from around the United States, uh, it's about friendship building. Because now I have friends, when I get stuck or we got a project, I can pick the phone up and say, hey, look, this is what we're trying to work on. I don't want to reinvent this wheel, so what are you guys doing? So, you know, if you ever want to jump on a call, have nothing else to do, let me know. I'll send you the link, and you can come laugh with us. So. Before I say my words, I just want to piggyback a little bit on Buster in terms of the technical assistance and additional information, because we're very focused on expanding access to peer support in the Commonwealth and having that conversation, how to do that. And then you all you know, provided those technical assistance resources, and we're able to start the, I never get this right, the Leadership Fellowship Academy, did I get that yeah. in the right order? You know, and, and trying to strengthen the, the strength the, of peer leadership. So I would never have known that program existed if it wasn't for the TTI and those TTI calls. So I only have two words because I'm a Yankee and we don't talk that much. Um, uh, big boat. For me, crisis is all about the big boat. And part of the approach to this um, training process is to find subject matter experts who at the last slide will have how you can contact them so that if an entity wants more training on that issue, they could reach out to, to those entities and really trying to find experts, I got People USA to do a few of my trainings, like finding folks that will have a depth of knowledge um, that can really create a, a stronger knowledge base and understanding. And so, I, I mean, if you've ever talked to me about crisis, it's all about the big boat. We have no kayaks, go in different ways, no paddle boards. We all got to get in a big boat and, and go together. Um, everybody else at the table has used all the good words. <laughs> Uh, but um, I'll, I'll piggyback on some and add some others. I think um, that apply to both TTI as a, as a, a group and the work that we do with the partners. Uh, one of them is early engagement, right? So uh, as soon as we get the contract started, Leah and the entire team are ready, you know, engaging with us and connecting, as everybody has said, with resources that exist within the network, right? And that is really valuable for a project that... Um, like Buster said, you, you have a tickle in your mind about something you want to do, and you know you can get it done very quickly. They're very, very on the spot. You can call any of them at any time for uh, um, an answer when you hit a roadblock. And um, very supportive and innovative. Like That's one of the things I, I really appreciate about the flexibility. It allows you to be innovative about things and about projects. And um, for me, because I'm a pro I'm program coordinator, so I'm, no, I'm not implementation, 
But I, can, I, I, I hear what the program staff are saying about the things that they want to do. And I can say, oh, I can write something. I know where you can get a little something, a little 250 <laughs> here, a 150 there, to get this ball rolling. And so they're often very, very excited about the opportunity because they're oftentimes, we've heard here, there, there are a lot of restrictions on funding. But TTI allows you to be innovative about, be flexible, and get things off the ground that, um, that you know, you may have been holding on to try to launch for 10 five years and you know that's one of the real benefits of the of, um, of the program awesome thank you chris so i do want to just point out that we do have these available and you can scan and read all about the ttis that have gone before us um, and they're on the table and i saw leah passing them out earlier so or check out the conversation corner at the expo hall um, but you can read all about the other ones. There's also uh, the resource guide that, that we put together every year that has a ton of resources. Um, and I wonder if Leah Holmes Bonilla has anything she wants to ask or add. Oh, yeah. Um, a big shout out to the Nashville Research Institute, who you all know through our calls. Um, um, Ted Letterman happens to be sitting right here next to me. Um, <laughs> But when you're looking at um, your evaluation, they are the rock stars of evaluation, right? It's not just bean counting, it's how creative you can be in both your qualitative and your quantitative evaluation. And that's a big part of it because we want you to share what you've learned and what mm -hmm. you've done, not only back to SAMHSA, but you guys hear me on the calls all the time. Did you know what they're doing in Washington State and what they're doing in Oregon? You could really learn from that. So um, I just wanted to make sure that we included them. And as Jane said, please don't be shy about asking questions. Can you stand up, team? We have a wonderful team of folks. Um, and they're all very approachable. So please approach. Um, thanks, Jane. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, team. Um, so I. We have like a few minutes left. If anyone has questions, may get anything online. <laughs> awesome. Well, I would. Did the people who won get their prizes? We were super busy up here. No. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Bren, someone asked if they could appeal if you were disconnected. Uh, yeah, just call the 1-800 number and <laughs> for anyone and we ask them about it. <laughs> well, I just want to thank, thank my panelists. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the work that you do every day. It is an honor and a blessing to work, to work with all of you. So thank you. And thanks to everyone here. Thanks for staying with us.